Until the End of Time by Brian Greene Preface, I do mathematics because once you prove a theorem, it stands forever. One the statement, simple and direct, was startling. I was a sophomore in college and had mentioned to an older friend, who for years had taught me vast areas of mathematics, that I was writing a paper on human motivation for a psychology course I was taking. His response was transformative. Until then, I hadn't thought about mathematics in terms even remotely similar to me. Math was a wondrous game of abstract precision played by a peculiar community who would delight at punchlines turning on square roots or dividing by zero. But with his remark, the cogs suddenly clicked. Yes, I thought. That is the romance of mathematics. Creativity constrained by logic and a set of axioms dictates how ideas can be manipulated and combined to reveal unshakable truths. Every right-angled triangle drawn from before Pythagoras and on to eternity satisfies the famous theorem that bears his name. There are no exceptions, sure, you can change the assumptions and find yourself exploring new realms such as triangles drawn on a curved surface like the skin of a basketball, which can upend Pythagoras's conclusion. But fix your assumptions, double-check your work, and your result is ready to be chiseled in stone. No climbing to the mountaintop, no wandering the desert, no triumphing over the underworld. You can sit comfortably at a desk and use paper, pencil and a penetrating mind to create something timeless. The perspective opened my world. I had never really asked myself why I was so deeply attracted to mathematics and physics. Solving problems, learning how the universe is put together, that's what had always captivated me. I now became convinced that I was drawn to these disciplines because they hovered above the impermanent nature of the everyday. However overblown my youthful sensibilities rendered my commitment, I was suddenly sure I wanted to be part of a journey toward insights so fundamental that they would never change. Let governments rise and fall, let world series be won and lost, let legends of film, television, and stage come and go. I wanted to spend my life catching a glimpse of something transcendent. In the meantime, I still had that psychology paper to write. The assignment was to develop a theory of why we humans do what we do, but each time I started writing, the project seemed decidedly nebulous. If you clothed reasonable sounding ideas in the right language it seemed that you could pretty much make it up as you went along. I mentioned this over dinner at my dorm and one of the resident advisors suggested I take a look at Oswald Spengler's Decline of the West. A German historian and philosopher, Spengler had an abiding interest in both mathematics and science. No doubt the very reason his book had been recommended. The aspects responsible for the book's fame and scorn, predictions of political implosion, a veiled espousal of fascism, are deeply troubling and have since been used to support insidious ideologies, but I was too narrowly focused for any of this to register. Instead, I was intrigued by Spengler's vision of an all-encompassing set of principles that would reveal hidden patterns playing out across disparate cultures, on par with the patterns articulated by calculus and Euclidean geometry that had transformed understanding in physics and mathematics. Two Spengler was talking my language. It was inspiring for a text on history to revere math and physics as a template for progress. But then came an observation that caught me thoroughly by surprise man is the only being that knows death, all others become old but with a consciousness wholly limited to the moment which must seem to them eternal, knowledge that instills the essentially human fear in the presence of death. Spengler concluded that every religion, every scientific investigation, every philosophy proceeds from it. 3. I remember dwelling on the last line. Here was a perspective on human motivation that made sense to me. The enchantment of a mathematical proof might be that it stands forever. The appeal of a law of nature might be its timeless quality. But what drives us to seek the timeless, 
to search for qualities that may last forever. Perhaps it all comes from our singular awareness that we are anything but timeless that our lives are anything but forever. Resonating with my newfound thinking on math, physics, and the allure of eternity, this felt on target. It was an approach to human motivation grounded in a plausible reaction to a pervasive recognition. It was an approach that didn't make it up on the fly. As I continued to think about this conclusion, it seemed to promise something grander still. Science, as Spengler noted, is one response to the knowledge of our inescapable end. And so is religion. And so is philosophy. But, really, why stop there? According to Otto Rank, an early disciple of Freud who was fascinated by the human creative process, we surely shouldn't. The artist, in Rank's assessment, is someone whose creative impulse dot attempts to turn ephemeral life into personal immortality. For Jean-Paul Sartre went farther, noting that life itself is drained of meaning when you have lost the illusion of being eternal. 5. The Suggestion, then, threading its way through these and other thinkers who followed, is that much of human culture, from artistic exploration to scientific discovery, is driven by life reflecting on the finite nature of life. Deep Waters who knew that a preoccupation with all things mathematics and physics would tap into visions of a unified theory of human civilization driven by the rich duality of life and death. Well, okay, I'll take a breath as I remind my long-ago sophomore self not to get too carried away. Nonetheless, the excitement I felt proved more than a passing wide-eyed intellectual wonderment. In the nearly four decades since, these themes often simmering on a mental back burner, have stayed with me. While my day-to-day -day work has pursued unified theories and cosmic origins, in ruminating on the larger significance of scientific advances I have found myself returning repeatedly to questions of time and the limited allotment we are each given. Now, by training and temperament, I'm skeptical of one-size-fits-all explanations. Physics is littered with unsuccessful unified theories of nature's forces, only more so if we venture into the complex realm of human behavior. Indeed, I have come to see my awareness of my own inevitable end as having considerable influence but not providing a blanket explanation for everything I do. It's an assessment, I imagine, that to varying degrees is common. Still, there is one domain in which mortality's tentacles are particularly evident. Across cultures and through the ages, we have placed significant value on permanence. The ways we have done so are abundant, some seek absolute truth, others strive for enduring legacies, some build formidable monuments, others pursue immutable laws and others still turn with fervor toward one or another version of the everlasting eternity. As these preoccupations demonstrate, has a powerful pull on the mind aware that its material duration is limited. In our era, scientists equipped with the tools of experiment, observation, and mathematical analysis have blazed a new trail toward the future one that for the first time has revealed prominent features of the eventual if still far off landscape to be. Although obscured by mist here and fog there, the panorama is becoming sufficiently clear that we cogitating creatures can glean more fully than ever before how we fit into the grand expanse of time. It is in this spirit, in the pages that follow, that we will walk the timeline of the universe exploring the physical principles that yield orderly structures from stars and galaxies to life and consciousness, within a universe destined for decay. We will consider arguments establishing that much as human beings have limited life spans, so too do the very phenomena of life and mind in the universe. Indeed, at some point it is likely that organized matter of any kind will not be possible. We will examine how self-reflective beings contend with the tension entailed in these realizations. We emerge from laws that, as far as we can tell, are timeless, and yet we exist for the briefest moment of time. We are guided by laws that operate without concern for destination, 
and yet we constantly ask ourselves where we are headed. We are shaped by laws that seem not to require an underlying rationale, and yet we persistently seek meaning and purpose. In short, we will survey the universe from the beginning of time to something akin to the end, and through the journey explore the breathtaking ways in which restless and inventive minds have illuminated and responded to the fundamental transients of everything. We will be guided in the exploration by insights from a variety of scientific disciplines, through analogies and metaphors. I explain all necessary ideas in non-technical terms, presuming only the most modest background. For particularly challenging concepts, I provide brief summaries that allow you to move on without losing the trail. In the end notes I explain finer points, spell out particular mathematical details and provide references and suggestions for further reading. Because the subject is vast and our page is limited, I have chosen to walk a tight path, pausing at various junctures I consider essential for recognizing our place within the larger cosmological story. It is a journey powered by science, given significance by humanity, and the source of a vigorous and enriching adventure. A note about the author, Brian Greene is a professor of physics and mathematics at Columbia University and is renowned for a number of groundbreaking discoveries in string theory. He is the author of the New York Times best-selling books The Elegant Universe, The Fabric of the Cosmos, and The Hidden Reality. Greene hosted two award-winning Nova miniseries based on his books and is also a co-founder of the World Science Festival. With his wife and children, he lives in Andes, New York, and in New York City.